I was gonna try and make like a comedy skit about this about the whole Marfans thing to see if I can at least make it at least a little bit funny and enjoyable to watch but then I thought like no nah, cuz this shit is serious and it's not fun to live with plus I may get emotional from talking about it but if I do I do but fuck it anyway so some of you are wondering what is Marfan syndrome well it's a genetic disorder so what is Marfan syndrome so let me tell you as I read it from the Marfan Association webpage and excuse me because I need to go to near it because my eyesight is fucked due to the Marfans Marfan syndrome is a genetic disorder that affects the body's connective tissue connective tissue holds all the body's cells organs and tissue together it also plays an important role in helping the body grow and develop properly so in layman's term we can't really do normal stuff like other people can do like we are limited in what we have to do I can't really play sports or work out to the hardcore degree like most people can I can work out but I can't but I'm not allowed to uh, lift over 20 pounds the most I can lift is like 10 pounds and before some of you are saying like oh bro you can't lift Marfans man it puts a strain on my motherfucking heart and also some of you may be thinking like hey but you're fat though that could also be the part of it true but I was skinny before when I was a kid and I still couldn't do that shit and still when you put strain on your heart when you're skinny it doesn't help you whatso fucking ever pretty much limited in what you have to do regardless if you're fat or not because most of us most of Marfan people are skinny guys very tall motherfuckers I may not be that tall I'm like around six feet but there's a lot more people that are way taller like Abraham Lincoln tall or Jeremy Lin size I'm not sure if Jeremy Lin has Marfans but he looks like one of us but he can play basketball so I'm pretty sure he's not one of us because yeah a Marfan guy is Marfan person can't go all the way because we can do stuff but we're limited is like what I'm saying and since we can't lift that much 10 pounds which is maybe 15 the maximum amount or when I carry a box, I, I'm carrying a goddamn thing and trying to put something over, over there. And still, it doesn't do good. And people tell me, no, you can't do that. But still, sometimes I feel like I'm a normal, but I got to stop doing that because I can't do that shit. Because it does put a strain on your heart. And speaking of the heart, the heart, as you all know, some of you may not know, has four aortic valves around it. I already had my one surgery for the left. I think it's, yeah. The left aortic valve, because originally I was supposed to get a pig valve, because my aortic valve was at five centimeters and I was about to explode. Because here's the story, because when I moved to Edmonton, okay, a little bit of backstory. Since birth, I got to go to the, see a doctor every year for a checkup to see how my aortic valve is going. So far, it's all good until I hit like 24 and I came to Edmonton and that's when they said like oh your aortic well no, hold on back up back up once I moved to Edmonton I got this regular specialist heart specialist and she took care of me here and there and then came the time where like I do my x-rays and like MRIs and stuff the basic stuff that I go through every fucking year and then one day they go like, oh, we need you to come in. I go, okay. Day comes along. I had to cancel the thing because I forget what happened. I had to cancel it. So I made another appointment. Second appointment comes along. I can't make it for that one. I forget what I did that I couldn't make it. So I had to cancel that one. Then I had a third appointment that I had to go for. For some reason, I canceled that one as well. And finally... They told me, no, you must come in for your appointment. This is the fourth, three appointments you already canceled. You must come in for this fourth appointment. No matter what, you must do it. So, yeah, I did go in for my fourth appointment. And they said, 
that my left aortic valve was at five centimeters and it was about to explode. For those of you who don't know, the left aortic valve is what John Ritter died of when his exploded. Because he was on a set of eight simple rules and he didn't know he had like a messed up aortic valve. So on the set, his left aortic valve exploded and he died on the way to the hospital. Because when that happens, you have an 80% chance of dying from that. There's no, it's like, yeah, on the way to Earth, you're pretty much fucked when that happens. So yeah, I had to compose myself there for a second, because thinking about death is not fun. So that's what happened to John Ritter, and that's pretty much what's going to happen to me if I didn't go to the fourth one, because like if I didn't go to the fourth appointment, I would pretty much be not be here right now. So, they put me on beta blockers and I had to, had to schedule me for heart surgery right away to fix that shit. Cause, like, it's pretty fucked up. Meanwhile, before the surgery, I had beta blockers to somewhat loosen the thing, the aortic valve, so it doesn't grow anymore. It just stays there at that point where it's like this, on the verge of exploding, but it just keeps it that way so it doesn't grow anymore. So yeah, I go for heart surgery, but before heart surgery, they tell me they're going to put an aortic valve in, which is a pig valve, and all you hear at the time is the clicking sound when your heart beats. So I say that's pretty much fun. Not really. Because, like, going around in life with an aortic pig valve, and every time you hear a click, 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 I don't know how it is because I never had it, got it, which I will explain later. In a bit, in a bit I'll explain. I can just imagine people just walking around with aortic pig valve going click, 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 click all the time. Especially when you see a hot lady or your blood rushes and your it goes even faster. like click, 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 click. Or if you're into dudes, you see a hot guy and you go like click, 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 click. Kind of shows that you're into them and not much of a chase. But hey, that's what I'm guessing. But I never got that because like once they went in there, they pretty much fixed it on its own, they just fixed it. They didn't need to put a regular pig valve in there. They just repaired my old one and I'm good to go. But here's the thing though, I got three more heart valves. I'm pretty sure, and I know pretty sure, uh, and I know damn well that down the road, I'm gonna go for another surgery too. Cause like it's bound to happen. Cause like once, once is go good, the other three, is about to happen, so yeah. That's the thing about people with more fans. We have non-stop surgeries. I've been through a lot of surgeries. Well, two major ones, like, yeah, for the heart, and for the recent one I just went through to uh, replace the pacemaker, put a new battery in, and put an extra lead in to help my heart pump faster and help me breathe easier, because before I couldn't breathe that well. But hey, they went through the ribs here, they went up instead of a regular pacemaker surgery, which is a one day surgery for pacemaker where they just go through here. They just cut a little bit and they put the lead in through there and you get to go home the same day, but you're pretty much sore in your left arm for like a month. This one, they went through the ribs cause they had to go open it up and go underneath. And you're pretty much in the hospital for four days. And since I had more fans, it was more than four days cause a lot of complications happened. Because of the bullshit that I go through. And then you go home and it takes like two months to recover. But anyways, I'm better now. But yeah, I'm better now. I can do more stuff. But I'm pretty limited. Because now I have fucking foot problems. And that's another thing. We are in constant pain all the time. We just don't show it. As I compose myself once again. Yeah, we are in constant pain. All the goddamn time. We just don't show it. And we're pretty used to it because we can deal with it. Because, like I said, we are in constant pain all the time. So we know how to manage it. Well, not manage it. We just know how to deal with it. Because, like, yeah. If it's not one thing, it's another. Because recently, yeah. Like I said, it's not, if it's not one thing, it's another. Like back problems or your leg or your foot or your elbow. Like now that I have like elbow pain nonstop on this one because I can barely throw. 
uh, like that. Like if I try to throw, uh, like that shit. Try to throw like a baseball, like no, I can't because it's fucking painful here. This one is not that bad, but it's still a little bit painful. And then you got the foot problem because before it looked like I may have gout, but apparently it's not gout because of my Marfan syndrome. So my foot is strained and irritated, so I got to get insoles for that, which I have been waiting since the end of September for that. So I got regular insoles from Walmart while I'm waiting for, while I'm waiting for my custom made ones. Oh, the life of a person with Marfan, man. It's not fun. But, like, we don't like... So I, I think none of us take, like, Oxycontin to get us away with the pain because we're not that hardcore into, like, drugs. I just take, basically, Advil or Tylenol. But recently I found out I can't take Advil anymore because, like, it messes up with my lungs. So I gotta take Tylenol, which takes a lot longer for the pain to go away because Advil did it faster. But, hey, that's how it is with Smartfan people. Ah, uh, yeah, just the life of a Marfan person. Another thing you should know about Marfan people, scoliosis of the back. So basically, there's always a hump back there, no matter, like, I try to sit up straight, but eventually the scoliosis of the back gets to you. So basically, people call you quasi when you're in high school, because, you know, high school people are fucking jerks and shit. But yeah. Scoliosis is back. I can't really do nothing about it because it's my condition and all. We uh, tend to have bad teeth like a British person. No offense to British people. Well, we have it worse, but mine got fixed because of the braces. But seriously, I should have like listened to my dentist and worn the retainer all the goddamn time after the braces were off because like I thought, oh no, I'm not taking my retainer to school. Fuck that. Because, you know, high school, we're little shitheads back then. My thinking was like, no, wearing a retainer night and day, fuck that. I'm not wearing that through high, on, during the day in high school. I'm t as soon as I'm off high school property, I'm going to put that bastard in and take it home with me and just wear it there. But it did its job, but still, they're not like that perfect. It's still kind of like a little bit messed up, but not really. Like, I got the vampire fangs right here. Like sort of vampire teeth before a little bit because like my teeth were fucked up and I had two vampire teeth in there so uh, yeah it was pretty fucked up. I still have them right here like the vampire teeth but it's all fixed now sort of even but it's still kind of pointy. So hey I guess I'm a vampire I'll suck your blood and shit. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have really bad eyesight which kind of pisses me off. Well, not the eyesight. Well, of course that pisses me off. No, what pisses me off is when people say, hey, can I wear your glasses? I go, okay. I put them on, they put them on. And it's like, whoa, man, how can you see? No wonder you're blind. Oh my God, how can you see in these things? First of all, my stigmatism is fucked up and way different. And your eyesight is perfect. Of course you can't see because these glasses are specially made to match my stigmatism because my left eye is weaker than the right one and it's bullshit with my nearsightedness because I have to look at shit really closely and this is one of the reasons I don't drive because I can't see the signs from far away. Even my... Even the eye doctor, I forgot the name of it already, op yeah, optometrist. Even my optometrist says it's not a good idea for me to drive so yeah I know that, he knows that, so yeah. Also, I can't go skydiving. Because if I go skydiving, my retina will get detached. So yay! Shit like that. Because of the Marfans. Another thing with the Marfans. We tend to be clumsy as fuck. And what I mean clumsy, clumsy as fuck is we tend to fall down a lot. Stumble on our own feet. Just basically be the clumsy stuff. Because our feet are like this. Normal people's feet are like this, but ours are inward because we tend to walk that way. But mine's are like these, but my, mine are like this now because I had like that fix when I was eight years old. Custom soles back then too. Hey, it's coming back now. So basically sometimes we tend to fuck up with our walking. 
especially during winter, man. It sucks in winter. One thing is we tend to have long fingers too. Mine don't look very long, but, well, sort of, a little bit, because like it's sort of dangly shit. But other people with smart fans, they have longer fingers. And gotta say, they pretty much look like alien hands. And people have said I look like an alien because of the mis the head shaving. It's like because of the head size, all that stuff. Because we kind of do look like aliens. I'm not saying. I'm just saying because like in reality, we kind of do look like that. Kind of makes me wonder if Slenderman is a Marfan guy. Because he does look like one of us. Maybe that's because I was never scared of Slenderman. Because he's one of us. Very tall motherfucker. Skinny. Long fingers. Yeah, he's one of us. So I guess Slenderman is on our side. You don't have to be tall to be a Marfan guy. Because I'm tall but not as tall as the other guys. And just look at me. This is me. I have Marfans. If you don't have a specialist for Marfans. And you just go to a regular doctor. They're gonna give you a deer in the headlights when you say you have Marfans, because they, some of them have not even never heard of it, and they don't specialize it. So, whenever I go to a medicine center, because my specialist is off for today, because they work Monday to Friday, and say if I'm massive pain, I need to go to an emergency center. I say like I go there. I say I have Marfan syndrome. They look at me like, huh? And then they have to look that up, and I go like, oh fuck, here we go again. And then they just prescribe me shit, and then I gotta make an appointment the next day with my actual doctor. I have to see if that prescription actually is right for me, because like my real specialist, heart specialist doctor, has to look at it and approve the life of a Murphy. Oh yeah, stop telling me to join the basketball team. Stop picking me first for a basketball team, and stop being surprised that I suck in your basketball team. Cause. We suck at sports because we can't do the sports. Well, we can do the sports, but we are limited in that shit. This is the reason why I gave my gym teacher back in high school a note before the season started to say that I'm not very limited in what I have to do. And of course, it's high school and some people think, oh, you're a lazy fuck. Because I couldn't do certain things and like I never said anything because like, hey, what am I going to say to high school kids? Hey, I have more fans, because I said that once before in elementary school. And elementary kids are the worst, man. When I said that in elementary school, they just looked at me like I was a disease or some shit. I'm not going to say that in high school, because that's even worse. Well, back then, that's what I thought, because, like, fuck. People in high school are just rude. But, yeah, every time I go to gym class, I try to be do the best I can. And when I can't, people get mad and say, like, come on, man, you're fucking tall, you should do this shit. Stop being lazy. And I go, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not, not going to say what's really going on because they're not going to not understand. But, hey, nowadays they do probably, I don't know. Because now we live in 2015 and we have the internet. We can research this shit. Again, I may look fine on the outside, but it's actually very fucking serious. Because I got to watch the salt intake that I eat. Because I can't eat highly salted foods. Like ham, bacon, sausage. But pork is okay for some reason. For some reason, I don't know why. Because my doctor says, like, all those other things are not good for you. But pork is fine and dandy. Okay, doc. Got a low salt diet because I went through a bunch of bullshit before because my legs got puffed up in some time long ago because I had too much salt intake. And plus, I was really depressed at the same time, so I stopped caring. And the one reason I think I got, like, fat and shit because I was way fatter before because, like, dealing with Marfans can be really depressing. And certain times I was really depressed, so I just ate my problems away. And that gained weight, which is not good for me. But still, it's more fans that I have, which is not fun in itself. And I got bigger when I had to go for surgery because I thought, oh, fuck. Because this is open heart surgery. This is a fucking serious. So before the surgery, I just basically ate nothing but fucking Burger King because I go like, fuck it. There's no point in this. I'm going for this surgery. I'm fucking depressed as fuck. I'm fucking scared. I'm just gonna eat my problems away. And then I just did and I ballooned up really big and shit. I lost a lot of weight from then. I mean, I look like it because I'm still kind of chubby and a little bit fat right now, but I used to be bigger. 
especially before my heart surgery because I just ate and ate and ate but fuck because I was depressed and scared. Wouldn't you be fucking scared if you went for open heart surgery? And again, like I said before, we are in constant pain, so we have a high threshold for pain. Because we deal with it every day. Oh, we deal with it every day. We wind up going to doctors a lot. We have doctor's appointments everywhere. We have to make appointments all the time. I went for x-rays two days ago for my elbow pain. I'm pretty sure I got other shit to do to go for because that's how the life of a Mar fans person is. I gotta go to see my heart specialist in two months because I went last time six months ago. I went for my surgeon's appointment. Went for a bunch of other stuff. I went to a rheumatologist to figure out what's wrong with my foot. I went to a foot doctor. Fuck, I went for x-rays here and there. Pacemaker here and there. It never ends the appointment. Good thing I'm on age, because that's basically disability here in Edmonton. But for the severely handicapped, which I guess I'm handicapped, so technically I'm handicapped because of all the bullshit that I go through. Because now, yeah, I can, you can technically say I'm handicapped. Severely handicapped, because that's what age is for, for like the severely disabled. Yeah, because I was on employment benefits before, and I actually work. That didn't last long, because I got to actually go for age... And that helped out a lot. I've been on it for like a couple of years now. Get paid every month a certain amount of good money, but that mostly goes for rent. And I got free health care here, so it's covered under my age. And I work part time now. I used to work like a motherfucker before, because like I'm Latino, that's what I do. I used to work like five days a week and so many hours. I used to do double shifts, because I said I can do this. But then I started having more problems and more with the foot problems and I have to cut down my hours to like part time which technically my work is always part time because they always say work part time. Doesn't matter how many days you work, it's never full time, it's just part time. But luckily I'm in a job where like I can set my own schedule. If I decide not to work for a month, I don't have to work for a month because they've got tons of people. So certain months I work two days a month, three days a month, but now usually I'm working like four days a month. The most I have worked with is five days a month after all this bullshit that's going on. But now I have to cut down since it's winter because I can't really go out that much because it's fucking bullshit. Especially puts a strain on my foot, especially during winter. So I gotta cut down on my hours during winter. Like I'm thinking one to two days. But yeah, I can make my own schedule, which is fun. And my boss is cool about it. So she's pretty awesome. Some people think that the ones who are skinny and don't know that they are Marfan people think they're anorexic or on drugs because it kind of does look like we're anorexic or are on drugs, but we're not because it's our because we have Marfans and shit. It's not fun and shit. I don't know how it is for skinny people with Marfans, but I can see what they're dealing with. I'm not skinny, but I do have Marfans and I have my troubles. Imagine skinny people. I can just imagine what the skinny people go through. There's a lot of skinny people. There's rarely a chubby Marfan person, but I'm one of them. I'm pretty sure there's more. But like I said, skinny Marfan people have a lot to deal with. We all have a lot to deal with. What am I saying? We're all in the same goddamn boat. Another thing about Marfan people, it is hard for us to find clothes, man, because the tallness in our shit, our feet are huge, so it's really hard to find shoes in our size pants because we have long legs takes forever long ass arms look at this shit pretty hard to find shirts i don't know how my grandma finds my shirts for me because like she's good at finding good clothes and when i try to find clothes it takes me forever but hey we got mr big and tall here so it's all good because hey i'm big and tall so it makes sense if you go to those stores yeah the regular stores my god, it's so hard, like you have to look for hours and it just pisses me off and pisses everybody off. I don't show it, but like, it, I show it somewhat, but like it gets tiring after a while. But yeah, it takes forever to find clothes, man. I take whatever clothes I can get. I don't care if it's good or not. Like, hey, I as long as I can wear it. As for living a normal life, we can pretty much live a normal life. We're just pretty much limited in what we have to do. 
like sports we can't really do sports I asked one time if I can go to a wrestling camp one time with my doctor because my buddy wanted to go to this wrestling camp to try and train about being wrestlers and stuff to learn the ropes and stuff and basically my doctor said no because like all the work we did on your heart surgery if something goes wrong during the training all that thing all that stuff we did to your heart gets to be undone which I understand completely so I can't do that I can't go skydiving like I said before because my retinas will get detached so it's not fun but I can do other stuff like bike riding it's just that I'm very limited with my foot right now because I'm having so much foot problems because now I have to use a cane when I go outside because my foot gets really swollen inside the shoes in when I'm walking around the house I'm all fine and dandy is just when I go out that's the problem though because now with the new pacemaker I got I'm more energetic than before because before before the surgery I was lazy as a motherfucker I I'm not afraid to admit it. I was just lazy but this new pacemaker that they got me was a new battery and an extra lead in which they've been trying on to put in for like three years now but they kept on failing because the lead was so no no they kept failing because my artery was so small and the veins were too small so they couldn't get it in so they had to go through the ribs like I mentioned before and now I noticed a whole lot of difference with it because like before I, I before the surgery I used a fan 24-7 because I was hot all the time now I only use it when it's actually hot I don't breathe as hard when I sleep or snore as loud I don't breathe heavily on the phone because my mom said like hey you don't breathe hard on the phone anymore and I noticed from my previous videos I used to breathe hard now I don't breathe that hard because you can tell from my earlier videos before the surgery I had somewhat of a hard time breathing not a hard time breathing but I was breathing really hard if you know what I'm saying but yeah it helps out a lot the new pacemaker the, it helps out a lot the new pacemaker defibrillator But again, down the road, I'm going to go for more surgeries. It's pretty much known. I know that. It's, I'm not looking forward to it, but I have to. Because that's how you live life. That's how you live life with Marfan. To go to doctor's appointment after appointment after appointment. Surgery after surgery after surgery. Dealing with pain after pain after pain. Oh, yeah. This Marfan syndrome is one of the many reasons why I choose not to to have a girlfriend. I'm gonna be real with you right now. Well, I was being real with you before, but I'm gonna be more real now. There are three reasons why I choose not to be with a woman and why I haven't had a girlfriend yet because like I, for, from all the bullshit that I've been through, because here are the three reasons. Number one, the Marfan syndrome because of all the bullshit. I don't want to put a woman through all that to go through what bullshit I have to go through because eventually they will leave because Let's not lie, women do lie. Women do leave you eventually because there's something that they can't fix. They will leave you eventually and I don't, yeah. And I don't want a woman to go through that like just to waste her time on me and then find out like, hey, I can't save this guy, I'm gonna leave. Basically, I've been wasting her time in the entire relationship, that's what I think. And my friends know I don't have a girlfriend and all that stuff and I tell them lies like, Oh, I'm shy. Well, that's not really a lie because I used to be shy, but not anymore. Because I like talking to people sometimes if they're cool or not. And I used to be young and stupid, so I was shy around women. Who wasn't shy around women? But then you start to grow up and you start to talk to more people. But hey, that's what I tell my friends because of the shyness. Of the shyness, I have no game and a bunch of other bullshit I told them. But yeah, that's what I tell them. But the real reason is because of the whole Marfan syndrome. Like I said, why the fuck would I waste a woman's time in a relationship when I have all this to deal with and they can't fix it? Because like women like to fix stuff. They really do. Well, before the 2000s, women were accepted of this stuff because it was the 90s. And before that, they accepted it. Well, the 50s, there was a different thing because there was sexism everywhere. But now we're living in 2000s and like some women are pretty really really fickle. I get some hate for that, but hey, 
is what I've seen. Because, like, some women do not want to do that. Like I said, why the fuck would I waste a woman's time in a relationship after with all the problems I have? Because eventually they will leave. And I've been saying that way too much. Second of all, I'm ugly as sin. Let's not lie about that. I am ugly as sin. Third, the small penis. I'm not afraid to admit it. I got the small penis. And I had sex before. And it wasn't awesome at all. I don't see why the fuck people want this so bad. Because I tried it twice before. It's nothing, man. It's overrated. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to get it in. There's can't get it in. I think I, at least I got it in for like a couple of seconds, like a minute or two. But after that, when they're like doing stuff, it feels like basically you're doing it to yourself. Like there's just another person, but it still feels like you're doing it, which is kind of boring. I'm going to tell you the truth. It's really goddamn boring. Of course, like I said, there's another person there, but still it feels like someone feels like you're doing it with yourself. Like, you know, when people fall asleep on their hand and do that shit, that, that creepy shit where they pretend their hand is someone else, that's what it feels like. Yeah, it's like that somewhat. But yeah, mostly because due to the Marfan syndrome. The Marfans. And there's another reason, the final reason why I don't want a girlfriend or a wife. And that reason is because there is a 50-50 chance that you, my offspring would get the Marfan syndrome as well. I do not want my offspring to go through the shit I've been through. Because that shit's not fun. There's a 50-50 chance that my offspring will wind up with the Marfan syndrome in themselves. And that is the reason why I don't want to have kids, because I've been through it. Why the fuck would I want my offspring to go through the shit I've been through? The horrible shit. The pain you deal with each and every day. Going to doctor's appointments after doctor's appointments. Surgery after surgery after surgery. Having pain one day, not knowing what it is about, but knowing it has to deal, has something to do with your Marvans. So you have to wait until Monday or a Tuesday, whatever day it is besides, to see your heart specialist, to wonder what the fuck is going on, and them having to send you to specialist after specialist. Time and time again. Going to bed each and every night wondering about life and trying to go through every day. And then when you finally go to, to, to sleep in the night, waking up in the middle of the fucking night with fucking muscle spasms. Because just because it just happens. Or trying to get up and you have massive pain in your feet and trying to go to the bathroom, like slowly walking each night, every night. Going through. Mount and mount of red tape just to get something approved. Because you need it. Not being able to do normal things like play sports or work out normally. Because you have a limited mobility. And to go for heart surgery because your aortic valve is fucked up. And then having to know that further down the road, you're going to have to go for the other three. And when you go for heart surgery, going through nine months of painful fucking rehab. Or having back problems after back problems after back problems. Just basically non-stop fucking pain all the time. Yeah, that is one of the reasons why I do not want to have kids. Because I don't want them to go through the same shit. So while I'm trying to compose myself, that's pretty much I can talk about right now. Because there's nothing else I can really say. If you want to learn more about bar fans, I'll link you to the site in the comment section below in the description bar. Whatever I can think right now, because yeah, it's getting too much. But hey, yeah, I'm gonna go listen to some music to calm myself down, and then further on down, make more videos. Because, like, yeah, making videos is what relaxes me and listening to music and doing other stuff. Because you think about this, because really, that, and to be real, if you think about this shit 24 7, you're gonna go wind up going crazy, and that's not good. So, you might as well keep your mind busy with other certain things. Like I said, right now I'm gonna go listen to music, edit this shit, 
and upload it and see what you all think. Yeah. What do you guys think? Take it easy, Human Nation. I'm going to go listen to some music. Take it easy. Bye.